as an example of how impactful uh, this therapy can be, uh, one of my personal patients was diagnosed with uh, the BRAF V600E. Uh, she um, was relatively young, late 40s, um, had a, a lung dominant disease, including a malignant pleural effusion. Um, she became very symptomatic from a shortness of breath and dyspnea on exertion point of view. Uh, we uh, enrolled her on uh, cohort C of this trial. Actually, she was previously untreated. And she received uh, the combination of dibrafenib, uh, trivetinib uh, on uh, trial. It was really amazing to me, and I would bring the medical students and the fellows in to see her because her story was one that she was so symptomatic that she was almost confined to her house. Um, her normal pattern was that she would go down and get the mail. They lived in a rural part of western Pennsylvania. Um, she would go on walks with their dogs and stuff like that, uh, and she wasn't able to do that. Um, when she started on this therapy, within three days, she was back walking to the uh, mailbox. She actually told me a, a very heartening story uh, about one of her favorite things to do was to walk her dog down along this little brook or river that ran by the house. And she said, I would sit in my kitchen and think I, I would never see that uh, brook again because uh, I was too sick to walk down there. And within three days, I was walking down there again. And so, uh, you know, as an oncologist, the ability to, to um, have that sort of response. She had a very robust radiographic response but when I saw her back a week or two after starting treatment, she had a, a more impressive uh, clinical response in that her symptoms were so much better. And obviously, symptoms only get better in that fashion if you're having a dramatic uh, response. So uh, this was actually quite heartening as her oncologist, and it persisted for quite some time. Um, she did have some problems with pyrexia as a side effect, but we were able to manage that and keep her on, on treatment. So she's. Uh, continues to do well. One can encounter toxicities when you administer the combination of dibrafenib and trametinib. Uh, typically, the drug that causes the most side effects is the trametinib drug. And when you encounter GI toxicities, we usually dose reduce the MEK inhibitor to help control the side effects. The other side effect that one encounters is skin toxicity, the rash. And that, once again, one typically tends to cut the dose of the MEK inhibitor to attempt to control the rash. The quality of life for the patients with V600E mutated non-small cell lung cancer uh, is substantially better on these targeted therapies. One of the things that happens with this combination, as well as with most of our other targeted therapies, is that the side effects begin to abate after the patients have been on it for several months. And they can tolerate being on these therapies for years. Now in contrast, in the platinum-based therapies, you know, the median numbers that we've been able to treat is typically about six. And the reason why we typically can give about six is because half of the people go off because of side effects and half because the tumor progresses. And if we give the standard single agent maintenance therapy, the patient's developing increasing fatigue, and typically it's very difficult to treat them beyond, eight, for instance, nine months to a year uh, because of increasing fatigue and increasing side effects on their blood counts. With the targeted therapies, including dibrafenib and trametinib, these patients can stay on these therapies for years. Uh, the other part that we hope will happen is that There'll be an ongoing process of the patients who progress on these therapies and you biopsy and find out why it quits working and then redesign the drugs or add new drugs to try to make it more effective in this setting. So we anticipate that they're going to be more and more effective.